PCS IBS seminar. Uh, it is a great pleasure to have with us uh, today Mr. Daniele Morone from University of Milano. And our scientific host today is Dario, who will introduce our speaker. Please, Dario. Yeah, thanks, Dylan. It's a great pleasure to have Daniele today with us. Um, Daniele is currently a PhD student in University of Milan under the supervision of Marco Genoni. But uh, as far as I understand, he's currently in Finland, uh, where uh, he's uh, spending part of his PhD period uh, in, uh, in a startup company called Algorithm Q. Um, he works on several topics in quantum information, and today's talk, uh, I forgot the exact title, but it's about non-Markovian effects in quantum batteries, I guess. And Daniele, probably it's time to share your screen and uh, start your talk. See? Yes. Uh, thanks, Dario, for uh, the chance okay. thanks for the presentation. Uh, yeah, I will have this discussion on a recent work we did uh, about uh, charging of uh, quantum battery and non Markovian environment. So we wanted to go see what's, what happens to this uh, process when uh, it's affected by the dissipation of an environment that is not only weakly coupled to the system. Uh, uh, slide, a little bit of outlines. I will introduce a little a bit what are quantum batteries and what's the state of research about them. And I will talk a little bit about collisional model, which is a class of model that we used in, in our work. After that, we present these results. Uh, about quantum batteries. So quantum batteries is just a system quantum system that we want to use to store energy. And if we look at it under this perspective, it seems quite easy. We can define its energy simply from its, uh, given its Hamiltonian, and we can evaluate it from its energy, from this relation, but there's a catch, obviously. Not all of the energy of a system can be used, does work. So we have to find a figure of merits that's more representative of what we want to do. This figure of merits is given by the ergotopy, which is defined as the maximum amount of energy that can be extracted from a unitary operation. And it's basi basically uh, given from these uh, relations, uh, relations where we uh, optimize over all possible unitaries that can evolve or, uh, or the state of the system. And this is a quantity that's quite interesting to play with and there's a lot of uh, interesting properties. So for example, if we just consider a state of a system, we can notice that uh, not a, uh, there's a large class of uh, states that have non-zero energy, but have zero ergotopy. We can refer to the state as passive state. And uh, for example, one of the one of the state is the maximum mixed state, which is uh, as non-zero energy and but as uh, zero ergotopy. Uh, we can therefore uh, simply think of uh, the ergotopy as the uh, evaluation of the energy from uh, uh, the state, the initial state, to the state, to the, its correlated uh, passive states. Uh, and the process, the thing is that by using only uh, unitary. Uh, operation. We can't uh, do anything else but uh, reorder uh, the eigenvalues of our density matrix. So the passive state is actually just the uh, energy uh, minimized uh, eigenvalue reordered uh, mini, uh, uh, density matrix. Uh, a particular uh, relation that I really like, I generally really like, is the one for the uh, ergotopy of a qubit evaluated from its block vector, vector component, where, as you can see, it's simply the addition of two terms, one that is the energy and one that's proportional to the uh, length of the block vector, which is basically uh, a function of the purity. So there's just two components to the ergotopy of a qubit, and that's the purity and the 
and the energy and the energy yes so after this little bit into the introduction let's go out and look at what research, the state of research on quantum batteries there's currently uh, two different line of research uh, one that started from the seminal work of Alitsky and Fans in 2013, when they had looked at uh, what's the effect of entanglement on uh, extractable work. And since then, there's been various work where they have uh, when they go see what uh, quant uh, quantum phenomena can do to boost the uh, properties of a quantum batteries. So they're basically uh, making a resource theory for the charging of a quantum battery and the second type of line of research is about uh, uh, the working of a quantum battery and the dissipative effects of an environment where they both go look at uh, what's uh, what this uh, dissipative effects uh, do on on the uh, working of the battery and what's the way we can use to prevent this distributive effect from taking act so like for, for example method to control the battery and stabilize its uh, populations and also something we can be happy about in the recent years there's been a couple of experimental implementation of uh, quantum battery so it's uh, uh the type of research that's quite living in the last years. Uh, as I mentioned, my work is belongs to the second class. It's uh, a work on open quantum battery. So before introducing it, I will uh, introduce another uh, work, which is where they study a model which is closer, closely related to the one we studied. Uh, so let's consider this simple model where there's uh, two qubits, one working as the charger and one working as the battery, and they're both initialized in uh, uh, zero, uh, zero in the in their grand states basically, and uh, we pass energy onto the the onto the battery uh, by applying a, a coherent drive on the charger, and uh, as this is a open uh, quantum battery model. We also have the interaction. Uh, with, a, uh, with an environment, which in this case, we will only uh, interact with the charger. So the battery, if not for its interaction with the charger, will be perfectly isolated. And uh, this type of model is described from this uh, master equation on the side, where the term is proportional to G is the, is its, uh, uh, is its interaction uh, is the interaction between the battery and the charger the that proportional to f is the coherent drive and then the dissipative, the dissipative terms uh, this model has been analyzed in a work in a really recent work by farina et al where they found and because it's uh, analytically uh, uh, solvable it's um, it's been uh, studied uh, in a lot of under a lot of different uh, hypotheses and uh, uh, finding different results about them. There's one in particular we were interested about, and in that they found a maximum for the ergotopy under a certain uh, tuning of the uh, of the uh, parameters and uh, only in the regime which which they call of large loss limb uh, of large loss of uh, or of uh, uh, low supply energy, basically. So it's in the limit where the frequency of the coherent drive is uh, small compared to all other quantities. And uh, so this is one of the results that we want to keep in mind for later. So let's go back to what we need to do. This same model can be realized to a uh, collision model. So we are look. Let's have a look at what a collisional model is. Uh, in its simplest formulation, a collisional model can be realized as uh, uh, streams of. Uh, well, it's simply we are just uh, discretizing everything. We are discretizing the time, and we are discretizing the environment as a uh, infinite uh, set of finite system called an unchiller. 
And each collision is basically the interaction between an ancilla and the system. Uh, this is one in particular is Markovian because the, it cannot create any, any memory effect. And uh, as you can see, this one is given because it uh, satisfies certain assumption. But if we take, because it, it's, it is Markovian, and if we take the uh, continuous time limits for the t that goes to zero, this will return the master equation from before. So we can actually uh, describe the same model as before under this uh, class of model. Uh, but we don't really just want to study the same model. So what can we do to implement uh, some uh, non-Markovianity in, uh, uh, in these settings? There's actually quite a few ways to do it because this is a really versatile, versatile tool to study non-Markovianity. The one we choose and one that is uh, uh, commonly common now is that we can simply add an interaction between two ancillas. So if we take the system as study as saw before and we add the this new collisional model, this is the scheme we came up with. We still have the battery and the charger that interacts and we apply the coherent timing on the charger. But this time, instead of the bosonic bat, we have the, the collisional model. And we introduced an uh, uh, ancilla ancilla interaction between the, uh, the ancilla that just interacted with the charger and the ancilla that's coming to interact with the charger. Uh, so before tracing out the old ancilla, these two, uh, these two interact and this creates both some moment, uh, but both a memory and build up, uh, build up system environment uh, correlation. Uh, this is the kind of model we'll be studying, and uh, it is described by a few parameters, which is the frequency of the life, the loss of the system, uh, the battery charge and coupling strength, and the swap probability uh, between the, uh, uh, the two ancillas. Basically, the ancilla ancilla interaction that we added is the one known as the uh, incoherent partial swap. Well, uh, with a certain probability p, the two ancilla swaps, and uh, with probability one minus p, nothing happens. So we want to study how uh, the properties of our model are affected by uh, uh, these parameters. And uh, we start initially where everything is. Uh, at uh, in its ground state, and we decided to only have a look at quantities in its uh, steady state. So let's go have a look at but, our results. Uh, sorry, jo just yes. to clarify. So all these parameters are constant uh, from step to step. Yes, they're the constant on uh, the dynamics. Uh, we just uh, uh, we just study the results when uh, we vary them uh, to, to different simulations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and we have also uh, another question from Dominic. Yes. Yeah. Can you go a slide back, please? Yes. Yeah, here. So, um, so you have this charging ancilla, and then you have the other ancillas. And the role of the other ancillas is to lose the memory or what is the what are the, what are the roles of these can you repeat that uh, so compared to the model before there's an interaction between the, uh, the two ancillas and yeah. the fact that this interaction is present means that it's preserving some sort of history on the about the system because the state of the for example uh, ancilla i is conditioned by the state of uh, the system. As this interacts with the next ancilla, the state of the next ancilla, and therefore this interaction with the system is conditioned by a previous state of the system. So it's creating a memory. Uh, memory of what? Of charging or of the battery? Or... Memory. <laughs> Memory about the state uh, of the system at previous time, basically meaning 
the system is no longer Markovian. Okay, and what do you call the system? Which one of these is that the chain or the C or B? In this case, I'm referring to the composite system C plus B. Oh, so this chain is carrying some memory about C plus B. Uh, yeah. Uh, is that true? But the C plus well, B becomes when, becomes fixed right this, after this well, many interactions. With the chain, with the chain, you refer to the collisional model to the value of mm -hmm. No, I'm what I'm talking about is actually the fact that uh, the system itself is conditioned. It, I mean, it's 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 the opposite of what the uh, definition of Markovian is. It, be, it basically means if we have a system in a certain state, its its next state does not depend on the on the previous one. What we are saying is because we are adding this interaction, the next state of our system, it depends from the previous one. It's not about what kind of state the, uh, the collision models are, uh, uh, are into. It's about if the system has some sort of memory with itself. There's a, it's what is called a bit are... of information. So information about the system flows from the uh, from the collisional model back into the system. And you are studying how this affects the charging. Yes. What is charging? Oh, charging. Okay. Thank you. There's other question. I can go on. Uh, no, not now. Please uh, continue. Again, so we wanted to have a look at the steady state properties of the of the system. In here, we report the energy and the ergotopy, and we can notice a couple of different things. First of all, if we just look at some fixed values of uh, G's and look at it varies uh, with P, we notice that. The energy actually monotonously increases while uh, decreases, I mean, while uh, the ergotopy up to a certain value of P at least, it increases. So this naturally means that this uh, function of different, si of different sign, it means we are increasing the ergotopy while decreasing the energy. So Naturally, it's it was good to introduce the this figure of merit because it's really necessary when studying what quantum battery. And uh, we if we remember the other relationship uh, relation about the ergotopy of a qubit, it, this basically means we are producing states that are less mixed. Um, so or if you want to say in another way. Throughout the dynamics, the state is losing less information. Uh, the things that we want to uh, so, and if we just focus on this, uh, on this, on this thing, it seems that adding some memory from the environment to the battery has some beneficial effect on the properties of the batteries, but that. Full picture is actually a little bit more complex. So as I said before, in the uh, when the battery is just a bosonic bat, uh, there was a maximum value of ergotopy. And this increment that we have actually never goes above that threshold. Uh, what we are doing is basically, as P increases, uh, we are pushing uh, points of the parameter map that are outside of the optimally tuning uh, region for the ergotopy inside that boundaries. It means uh, that we are extending the optimally tuning zone. And it basically, even if we are giving some increase in the 
ergotopy of the system, we are we are not able to produce a state that goes above the same uh, maximum ergotopy that we have in the case of a uh, Markovian bat. Uh, Sorry, this is actually quite well. yes. Daniela? Yeah. So if I understand correctly, you say the 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 dash line. Uh, is what you yes. get uh, in the Markovian case uh, when uh, you are uh, in the what is the name in the yes, small the low uh, supply energy yeah. when you are in that limit, yeah. right? Yes. Okay. So, okay, and you say that this is the best that you can get in terms of ergotropy. You cannot do anything better than that. Now you say yes. by adding memory, you can take situations which are not in that regime uh, and you can bring them at the same level of ergotropy right yes and um, you can see it, for example from this plot uh, yeah. because this the, that uh, condition also requires that g is uh, really small uh, small compared to k so as g decreases we are getting close at p equals zero to the, that limit correct and no, if we go uh, towards the higher values, uh, we, to get close, we need to increase P. Sure. Now, my question is, do you have any understanding why the memory less but very low coupling limit is the best? Uh, and you, try? Do you have an analytical understanding why that is a bound and is not? Or a priori, you could expect that memory can even do something more than just... Yes. We have some understanding about it. I will talk about them uh, in a while. So okay. I have some understanding why the limits, uh, that limit in particular is uh, the best for the Markovian bats, but about why we don't go about, above that threshold, our hypothesis is that this, in particular, this, uh, this maximum is uh, basically uh, defined from the operator operatorial properties of our, uh, uh, of our map. So without introducing uh, uh, any new, mm. new type of interaction, different, uh, different map, we can go above that session. Uh, but there's something, something interesting that I will discuss later as to why that region is the optimal one and why as we increase P, we go towards that region. Okay, thanks. Okay. So it seems that, okay, we're extending the region where it's, uh, uh, where we have our optimal ergotopy and uh, nothing more, but actually, we are only looking at the steady state properties of the dynamics. So, so that may be something more interesting if we were to look at uh, uh, the transient. For example, the property of the dynamics in the various uh, uh, case is not, are not always the same, only the steady state properties. So if we were to look at the uh, charging power, for example, that is uh, how fast uh, we are charging of battery, uh, well, we reach the same value in, uh, in all cases, but for higher values of G, we can have a faster dynamics. So, uh, it means that while we are not improving the maximum ergotopy, we are, we are uh, improving on the charging power of the battery compared to the uh, bosonic bats. Uh, so to answer the uh, question from Dario and to try to understand a little bit better what is happening with the system, we introduce a, a me measure of non-Markovianity. Uh, we basically want to see uh, a little bit more, we want to understand better what's happening for uh, the in the system. So we introduce this measure that basically takes into account uh, the expansion of the uh, accessible states uh, uh, to the, uh, the to the system throughout the dynamics. So uh, a Markovian uh, uh, dynamics for uh, any thermal operation is generally uh, monotonously uh, this quantity is generally monotonously decreasing. So any times this uh, uh, quantity increase, it means we are in presence of a, a non-Markovian effect. So we just sum over uh, integrate over all those. Uh, 
times. And this is, gives you a uh, quantification of our uh, non-Markovian phenomena. And we want to use this quantity to evaluate both for the composite system and for the battery-only subsystem and see if we can find something about what is happening. So for the composite system, and it's something that was quite predictable, is that uh, the, the measure increased monotonically with P. And this is, I would say, I was saying predictably because P is our control parameter to how much system environment memory effect we are introducing. So this much is really expected. There's nothing interesting about it. But if we want to go out to look at the battery, we notice that the things are a little bit different to say the least. First of all, I'm putting the scale in a logarithmic one because this measure in particular is quite weak. It means already when we are in uh, uh, at a value of 10 minus 4 minus 5, this is already is a measure of uh, it's a system that is non Markovian. So it's picking up a really small signal. And uh, let's go a really uh, another look at the, uh, what is happening. So the system becomes Markovian only at intermediate intermediate value value of p. P equals zero. The system is already non Markovian. This is naturally due to its interaction with the uh, uh, charger because it's two qubits strongly interacting, they forming memory with each other. Uh, the fun, the interesting part is that as P increases, so as we are adding information from the environment, the battery is losing uh, its memory. It's not introducing any new memory, but it's losing the one it's originally originally had to do its interaction with the charger. So we are actually decreasing the memory effect in the battery subsystem. And uh, uh, we understand this, what. Uh... <laughs> Uh, not uh, well, this is really interesting, but also really uh, complex to study in a more uh, uh, mm. rigorous manner. But what we're assuming is that uh, we have uh, a non Markovian effect due to interaction with different systems, and these two sources of non Markovianity are basically interfering with each other. This is our interpretation of what is happening. Anything more rigorous of that will go way beyond me. I see. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it's uh, it's interesting that you add memory, but you lose memory actually uh, in the in the part that you care about. But uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, and that's, that's actually the whole point of our work is that right. the we noticed that the part where uh, we achieve the maximum value of uh, ergotopy at steady state at least and also the, the region where uh, the non markovian measure achieves uh, a zero value it means uh, that the uh, the memory effect that we have from the uh, environment is not what really characterizes uh, or steady state ergotopy, because this can be based on the prop, based on the different model, uh, but a good thing and a bad thing. But the memory effect of the internal uh, uh, degree of freedom of the battery is what uh, really it's really interesting when evaluating steady state ergotopy, because they tend to have in general opposite behavior, and if we want to achieve the maximum, we have to have. Uh, uh, internal degree of freedom, which has uh, Markovian dynamics. So, uh, yeah, for example, you do you because uh, I mean, you told me that to increase, uh, I mean, let's say this increase uh, in, uh, in ergotropy is coming from uh, a better purity of the steady state, right? Do you understand why? Being more pure means less uh, memory. I mean, or the other way around. While, well, yeah, it's 
it's not in really rigorous and when talking about uh, memory effect is kind of a uh, classical it's uh it's always something like this but basically it's a little it's quite known that uh, we have a uh, faster uh, mixing we are we lose information really fast with non-Markovian dynamics. So if we are only looking at the property of the battery subsystem, in this case, the ergotopy and its, its purity, that's interesting. Uh, of course, it's also important that it's the, it's the dynamics of the battery that has to be Markovian. Mm -hmm. I think there's some literature about uh, this phenomenon being uh, studied uh, and observed a few in different kind of model, and the um, non-Markovian effect does add uh, to uh, more mixing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and to answer the question you asked before, basically, why in the, the Bosonic but uh, model the ergotopy was in that low supply limit. Well, we had a look at also at the memory effect for that model, and we noticed how there's an inverse uh, uh, relation for the, uh, well, there's a monotonous incre increasing uh, function of the non-Markovianity for the different values of Gs. So basically the optimal regime for uh, the, uh, I found that model for the steady state of God, but it was also the regime where the battery dynamics is Markovian. And you cannot achieve this by increasing P, but you achieve this by uh, lowering its uh, 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 the strength that the battery communicates with the, with the charger. So basically, the way we achieve the steady state is the same by uh, obtain a Markovian dynamics and uh, uh, eliminating in any uh, in any different ways uh, the memory effects. Uh, another interesting thing we found, which I don't remember if we put it on the paper or not, and that was basically that the state you achieve at steady state in the optimal regime is always the same. It's not only that it has the state, same steady state of Gosby, but it's the same states. And this is something we don't really have an intuition for. To recap a little bit. So basically we've studied this model of a quantum battery with a memory vector from the environment and with characterizes dynamics for different parameter, uh, combination of parameter for the map. Uh, we studied steady state ergotopy and uh, looked at how it's uh, affected by these parameters, and we uh, characterize also the charging uh, speed, the charging power. Uh, to uh, finish and to better understand it, we have that looked at uh, non-Markovianity, to a measure of non-Markovianity, and we noticed that uh, the uh, maximum of, of the ergotopy is actually only achieved when uh, the uh, Markovian, when the dynamics of the battery only is Markovian. And this is basically our conclusion is that uh, to, to achieve maximum steady state ergotopy, you have to look at the uh, non-Markovianity of, uh, of the battery only, and not really focusing on if the environment is adding non-Markovianity or not. These are two different uh, figure of merit, and only the first one is actually relevant to the problem. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Daniele, for this interesting uh, presentation. Let us thank Daniele. And we have time for uh, questions. Uh, well, so perhaps I can I can start. So, um, um, so essentially, uh, I mean, 
the uh, somehow the, the the I mean your results suggest that memory effects are important, uh, but let's say they play some non-trivial role only when there is let's say an intermediate or let's say a, an inter I mean something in between the system that you care on. So in this case, the battery and the environment, right? I mean, if there is a direct connection between battery and the environment, probably you will never, you will not see any interesting, yes. let's say, okay. Yes, mm -hmm. basically, this is, well, this class of model, this class, uh, well, when Farina uh, studied this model, uh, it was, his paper was charger mediating uh, inter quantum battery, uh, to mean this. And for different model, of course, uh, our results will be really different if we had uh, the same model but without the charger what we will see is actually the opposite is that uh, because we're actually introducing memory effect directly in the battery we will just see worse uh, uh, state yeah. state goes up here so well, uh, you what was, what I, mm -hmm, please go ahead so what i was saying before is that the uh no markoviani keep properties of the bat is not what's relevant is because this is really dependent of the type of uh, model you're considering so it's model dependent while if you only looked at uh, uh, no markovian uh, uh, at the memory effect on the of the battery dynamics uh, you're really uh, shedding the model dependent part and focusing on what's really important mm -hmm. yeah but you could you could consider like the opposite track. Let's say, yeah, before before uh, this this memory discussion, one could say, well, why at all you need you need the charger? I mean, why don't you drive directly light on the battery and you charge it? Now you could say, well, because the charger somehow is a way to protect the battery from memory effects uh, with the environment. In the sense, I mean. I think that memory effects in the in the in the environment is something that you cannot play with. I mean, either you have or you don't have. You could say that the presence of the charger allow you to make use of that instead of losing, instead of let's say yes. being detrimental. Mm -hmm. Yes, even though there's some catch even with that. So it's actually uh, protecting your bat uh, your battery from the memory right. effect but of course it really depends on the intensity of this memory right. effect because if we look at this when yeah. uh, we achieve perfect markovianity due to the balance between these two interaction we can achieve mm -hmm. the same maximum otherwise it's the uh, memory uh, memory effect of the but or of the charger which are uh, uh, which negatively impact the or battery. So if mm -hmm. we cannot act on the environment, maybe you will say we can tune the interaction within between the charger and the battery. So the right. charger in some way is able to uh, balance the memory right. of the environment. Right. This could be an approach. Uh, so in this kind, in this sense, it is. But it's I'm not really sure how much this uh, this balance can be achieved. Mm -hmm. I see. We also have a question from Alexei. Yeah, a simple one. Um, any ideas on how you can, well, or is it even possible by perhaps uh, optimizing the memory uh, to exceed the Markovian value, to go over the Markovian uh, value? Or is there a fundamental reason why that cannot be done? That it can, I'm pretty sure it, it cannot be done, at least from my understanding. I don't really have a proof about that, and uh, if, at least because, but uh, what I'm seeing is basically if you see it from the perspective of the battery, basically I'm saying mm -hmm. the charger and the environment balance themselves so that don't add memory effect. So over that limit, you cannot really uh, add any uh, improvement to your uh, steady state ergotopy or on your purity or what's uh, the value you're looking at. 
Okay, thanks. Any further questions from the audience? Uh, how much generic is the, because here you consider it a very, I mean, I don't know if it is very or not, you will tell us, but to me it looks very specific memory effects, uh, which is this uh, swap uh, operation. How much generic do you think are your results uh, against? I mean, I'm not an expert at all about this non-Markovianity, so I don't know if there are other other ways, other, uh, I mean, I know nothing about that. So I'm wondering in general, or no, in general, let's say, how much generic is this model compared to other, other memory effects that you can have or whatever? Okay, so to answer this, let me go here. So it's really about the way you modelize your collision of model, because for the Markovian one, of course, uh, you can take the limit and say, we achieve the master equation, right. uh, the inbound master equation. So we can say any system that describes a master equation is also described by this collision of model. Right. And I think the same can be seen in the non-Markovian one. Basically, when this type of collision is introduced, it's not that we have to look at the collision itself, but we have to look at what kind of dynamics it generates. And the one, the reason we choose this one is because there's a no, continuous time limit that you can take in I the see. region, at least for P that's really close to one. Mm -hmm. And this uh, it is uh, it raises a it's called memory kernel uh, non Markovian uh, master equation, uh, which is an uh, integral differential, um, uh, differential equation, uh, integral differential, differential equation, and it's a little bit messy to, <laughs> to compute. But uh, so basically, we are simulating that class of dynamics, uh, which is uh, described by that particular. Uh, I see. Uh, uh, differential equation. And I guess there are some models that uh, describe this kind of, uh, uh, that are described by this kind of uh, master equation. It I was see. already known between, before the, uh, it was studied as a collisional model, but it was uh, studied for, for some model. I don't re really remember which kind of uh, model it, it was discovered from, but it was already known before. Okay. Okay, so uh, in case there are no further questions. Um, yes, uh, I don't see any. So uh, let us thank Daniela again for this nice talk. And uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, with this, we conclude 